Hello, my name is Mitchell Pearson, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to process multiple files from a folder, but not only process those files, we're going to take a look at how to filter out the files we don't want, and also how to only return the most recent files. This is a very common request that I see all the time. Before I go any further, if you like this video, make sure to pause right now, hit that like button, subscribe, and also hit that little bell notification icon so that when we release new videos on Power BI, Azure, and DAX, and Power Apps, you get notified immediately. All right, so we're gonna jump right in. A lot of people know about the From Folder option in Power BI, no question about it, but once again, something that I receive through emails, through YouTube videos that I do, through forums where I answer questions, a lot of times people don't know they can filter it down and they don't know how to return the latest files instead of all of the files. I'm going to show you exactly how to do all of that right now. So the first thing that I want to do, obviously with Power BI open, is I want to go up to the Get Data tab, uh, or really just this Get Data icon and click on it. That's going to open up all the options that are available inside of Power BI. We're going to go over to File and then we're going to choose the Folder option and click Connect. Now the cool thing about the folder option is it allows us to connect to all the files in the folder and pull them all in at one time. It's a very dynamic solution because if you have a lot of files that you're receiving each day, you can't go create every day new connections to each of those files. That would be way too overwhelming. It would take way too long. So this is a really cool solution. I'm going to go ahead and click browse and I'm going to browse out to the location where I have multiple files at that we can use for this example. In fact, let me just open it up here in another window real quick and show it to you. So if I open this up right here, you'll see that I have a couple of files here, right? I have a demo file that's a PowerPoint file. I have a Word document here, and then I have a couple of text documents. Now, what is it that we're going for? I want to return this file right here and only that file. I don't want to return the PowerPoint files. I don't want to return the Word documents. I only want to return this file and I only want to return the latest because it has all my up-to-date information in it. So how do we do that with the from folder option? Once again, it's a pretty cool solution because it's dynamic. Whereas if you were doing this manually, having to choose a file, you'd have to keep updating your connection string. Now keep in mind that as we're going through this, I could have said, I want to grab the last three files, making this even more of a viable solution and dynamic. I'm going to move that back over. Let me go ahead and go into that Power BI Bootcamp folder here, go into my data, go into module two, file folder example, click OK. And then I'm going to click OK again to open up that. Now, what I'm going to see right here is I'm going to see all of the metadata information. I'm going to see the data about the files and I'm going to see it right here in this preview. And you'll see we have the four different files I just showed you. We have the Word document. And we have that PowerPoint. Once again, I don't want any of that. I just want this one file right here. So then I can go down to the very bottom and I'm not going to do combine right now, right? A lot of people, this is where they mess up. They do the combine operation. They combine the data and then it's kind of, you know, harder to go back and add the filters and do the things that I'm about to show you. So we're not going to do that yet. Instead, we're going to launch the Power Query Editor. All right. And it's launching on my other screen. So I'm going to go over there and grab that. You'll notice that I'm using an existing Power BI report that I've used in other YouTube videos. So there's a lot of extra tables here, but you can ignore all of those. The file folder example here is the one that we're going to be working with. Now, you'll notice that when you transform data, it hasn't imported the data from all those different files. What it's doing is it's saying, here's the file. Here's the type of file it is. Here's the last modified date. Here's when it was created. All of that information, which is pretty awesome. So we can leverage this. First of all, I know that the files that I'm connecting to are always going to be text files. They're not going to be PowerPoint or doc, you know, Word documents, right? So I can go to extension and I can even add a text filter that says where it equals and it always equals. Or since they're already in here, I can say, you know what? The only kind I ever want is going to be the text file. Almost chose the wrong one there. Whoops. All right, we'll click OK. And then you'll notice right here, in the formula bar, it's very explicit. It says only return the rows where the extension equals txt. Boom. We're on the right path. That's one way of filtering it down. Now, sometimes you might have in this folder multiple files that are of CSV or TXT or whatever it might be. 
and you need to filter it down to just specific kind of naming conventions or specific names. So another way to do that is looking at the name of the file. You can do something like this. I could come over here, click the drop down, tell it I want to add a text filter, and I'm going to do it where it begins with. Now you could do contains, you could do different things, but if I say begins with, I know, where's it at? Oops, I thought it loaded on the other screen. My fault. I know that anytime it begins with file space like that, it's the right file, right? Because we got all these other files coming in, but if it's a file space, it's the right one. Now, obviously, this is a demo. This is a quick little test. Yours would probably be like product list or, uh, you know, sales or claims or whatever it might be in that file. But mine is just file, file space. Now, this is Power Query Editor. It's not DAX. So here's a little tip for you. If you're working in the Power Query Editor, you need to make sure that you are using the exact naming, uppercase, lowercase, whatever it is, because in the Power Query Editor, this right here, this code that you're writing is case sensitive. It is case sensitive, meaning it must be lowercase. If it's lowercase, it must be uppercase if it's uppercase. So I can't type in here lowercase F-I-L-E. It will not work. It will filter everything out because if you look at the names over here, they are not lowercase F-I-L-E. The first character is an uppercase. That's a, the little thing that people mess up with Ilm all the time. Now, if I click OK here, right like this, it's going to pretty much stay the way it was, right? Because it already was filtered down. So we get that. But that's how you can take it a step further. Now, how do I get the, the last three recent files or the last one? How do I do that, Mitchell? I don't understand. That's the cool part here, right? So there's a couple of columns. You can choose what column you want, but you'll notice that I have date modified and I have date created. Most of the time, if I'm generating from some third party application, a new file, I would use date created. So let's just use date created here. And I'm going to come over here and find this date created. And I'm going to actually sort this column. And as you can imagine, I'm going to sort it in descending order, which is going to be the most recent first sort it in descending order. This is the trick to making this work. Now, if you say Mitchell, well, I only want the first two rows, the last two recent files, the most two recent files, then we're going to filter this report to only return those two files. So I go up to the very top. I'm going to tell that I want to keep rows right here. This is the magic sauce right there. And it's on the home ribbon, I believe. Let me make sure. Yep. Home ribbon. We're going to do keep rows, keep top rows. You could do bottom rows here. You could do different things, but we're going to keep the top rows and I'm going to tell it I want to keep the top two. Now I'm going to do two just so you can see it because a lot of times people say, hey, I need the last, I need the, the top five uh, rows because that's, you know, one for each week and that's the last month or whatever it might be. So we're going to do two here and then I'm going to click OK and you're going to see now we only have the most recent rows. Now, once you get to this point here, you can come over here, click combine files, combine the files and that will now extract the data from those files. Pretty cool, right? This is pretty cool stuff. Now we took it a little further than most people do, but once again, one of the things I see all the time is people do not leverage this to its full capability. Now, if you ever want to change this, you can always go back over to the applied step section, click on that little settings wheel right there, the gear icon, click on it. It'll open it back up and you can go in there and modify it and say, I just want the top one or the top five. That's up to you. All right. So is my face blocking that? No, it's not. That's good. Never know. Actually, you know what? I should hit the button here. I should combine the files so we actually see the data. And then I can see this right here. I'll click OK. This is actually, now that I'm doing this, I'm realizing there's one more thing I need to talk about here. And that is the column headers when you combine them like this. So it's a little bit longer, but we need to go into this next section. So I hope y'all didn't jump off here a little too early. But what I need to do is there's actually another problem. You'll notice that when you combine multiple files like this, that the header row is buried into the data. There's a couple ways to fix this. One, I could promote the first header and then I could filter out all the other ones by saying filter out any row that has name in it or any row that has state in it. That would work. The other way to do this actually is over here. I can come back up here and let me see if I can find it right here. I could go to the sample file. You see the sample file right here? Or is it the trans? Oh, here it is. Transform sample file right here. So I'm going in order for this combine operation to work. It's created all of these objects right here. It's a little bit overwhelming, but you don't have to worry about that, all that. Just follow my steps, right? 
So I'm gonna look at this transform sample file right here. And what I'm gonna do on this transform sample file is I'm gonna promote the header on this individual sample file so the other sample files follow suit, the other files follow suit. So they'll get promoted before they're combined. See, makes it easier, more intuitive, and it's cleaner. So I'm gonna click right here at the very top on this table icon, use the first row as header. There we go right there, and that looks good. Now, you'll notice we have an error down here, right? We're gonna go back, it has an error. I'm gonna show you what it is. That error message is because of this step right here, change type. What it's doing in this step is it was changing the data type of column one to text and column two to text. Well, guess what? There is no column one and column two because we just went back to the sample file and we changed it. So now it's whatever names they were, first name and last name, right? Whatever they were. So I need to actually just delete that step right there because it's causing it to fail. And then it brings me back to here. And now I can change the data types myself, text value, and then text value right there. All right. Finally, that brings us to the end of the video. It was still super quick. Lots of great information in here. Once again, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button. And also, I always forget, hit that bell notification so you're notified in the future. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.